my wife's religious. I'm not. And I've never understood it, but I'm starting to. Splattery. Excuse me, Duda. You're in the way of my big presentation. Can you come over here, please? Good girl. Gut feeling. What is this? I've been getting in touch with this a lot recently. So what is gut feeling, Oliver? Let's get this nice little screenshot. Will that do? A gut feeling is a physical response that can help you decide which action to take when faced with a decision. I think that was that right? Or faced with multiple choices. You get the idea. All right, don't sit on that doodah because it's, it's glue, okay? Good girl. There's another phenomenon that, it's not a phenomena, is it? Decision fatigue. <sighs> it's where you just have far too many decisions to make and you don't know which one to make so you don't make any. What are you doing? Now in my job as a content creator, I have no boss, I have no one to answer to, I can do whatever I want, whichever way I want, which is great. But the flip side of that is that every single decision is on me. How do I know which decision to make? Now, my wife's religious, I'm not. And I've never understood it, but I'm starting to. So let's say, so let's say life is about getting from a to Z to Z. Now you'd like to think that the path is just a straight line from here to here. Should I draw that? No, I won't draw that. But actually, life is all these ups and downs, these squiggles, and you may, you may get to Z, hopefully you get to Z. But what I've started to understand about faith, a religion, is that, let me use a different color pen. If the goal is really truly to get from A to Z, people who have faith believe that God is showing them how to get from A to Z, is helping them figure out which decisions to make, is talking to them, is talking through them. Now, as someone who doesn't have that kind of faith, I have this voice in my head, this feeling in my body, which I'm sure you do too, called gut feeling. You could also call it, I guess I'm calling it intuition. This feeling inside your body that may seem like it's giving you the wrong answer, it's giving you the wrong thing to go and do. It might go against everything logical, but where is that feeling coming from? And what does that feeling mean? Well, if I think logically about anything and everything I do, because this is basically a behind the scenes of what I do as a TikTok, a short form video creator, the logical things I could do don't make me happy in the, the, the work that I create. I'm constantly thinking about what other people want. How can I make it better for other people? When really, I just wanna make a video the way I want to make a video about the thing I want to make a video about. So instead of getting to here, 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 you get the idea. And trying to think logically about every single decision I make, I just follow what feels right and it's liberating, it's freeing. And for the last four, five, six years, I've been wanting to make something to post every single day. And it's, it's draining. Some days I love making videos. Other days, I just hate the idea of it and the work I en end up creating doesn't feel right. It feels like trash. <laughs> Where I just, I can't sustain it. On the weeks that I can do it, I might be able to do it for two, three weeks. I can't sustain it, it's too much. I'm constantly thinking about the next video. How can I get this out? I'm chasing something. I'm not happy with what I'm doing. So I've implemented a new system for myself. Instead of trying to make a TikTok every single day of the week, well, five days a week, don't work on weekends. So now Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I make a TikTok. And Tuesday and Thursday, I have creative time. Oh, Oliver, what's creative time? Honestly, I don't know, but that's where gut feeling's going to come in. Right, in the past hour, a few things have just happened. Numero uno, the shipment of all my failed merch line. So I'd say about $9,000. Yeah, I spent $9,000 on the merch based on pricing total value about 27,000 or so. So that's gonna be here between 10 and three tomorrow. And I wanna be able to have a cool way to show that in the video. So I wanna go to Walmart and get a clock. Okay, Oliver. So this, this is one of my ADHD systems over here, clock. And I mentioned in a video the other day, being able to incorporate things that my son would have into these videos helps share the narrative of what I'm like outside of being on camera. Because like, 
when I'm not working, which I only do between the certain hours of the day, I'm hanging out with the kids. There's That's everything to me. I would have been love it, but I don't like having them in the videos because I have to mask their faces the whole time, like blur their faces, it's annoying. So we're gonna get the clock, what else is there? I really wanna get some email pitches done. I've been using this new software that these guys created called Pickle, but I really wanna invest some time in getting the ball rolling with some of these brands because the building a partnership, trying to work on making a partnership happen for a social media platform isn't as simple as one email, okay, fantastic, we like what you're doing, let's work on it. It's following up so many times and building some kind of relationship so that when the time comes that they're running a campaign, they say, oh, you know what, we like this guy. So we're gonna start the ball rolling on that today. Also, I should be getting the Shrek shot from this Sporting Kansas City pro experience I did last week, two weeks ago, but that should be coming through. And I, <laughs> when it comes through, I'll show it to you. All right, before I go get this clock, I saw a Spider-Man clock here the other day that I think would be perfect for this video. Before I get that, I'm gonna go check the clearance aisle, see if there's anything decent here. Trash, 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 trash. <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh. Mr. Beast lunchbox, I'm all right, thank you. What is that? Uh, another Mr. Beast thing. What is it? All right, it looks like it's a, Mr. Beast toy. Okay. I wouldn't normally buy this toy, but if I think about the Mr. Beast controversy that there is at the moment, it being a Mr. Beast toy, and I get to do it with my son, I think that should make for a pretty cool video. I think if I can do it right, that would be a banger video. I'm saying like super viral on TikTok. Here are the clocks. So I'm gonna use this to show the time passing tomorrow of waiting for the shipment to arrive. And I need some screws for a vent cap that fell off the top of the house. Glamorous. Rugi. Oh, I got you a clock, a Spider-Man clock. You wanna see it? All right, let's get rid of this. Get out. How do I get this off? Yeah. And then we'll get it set up for tomorrow. Where's the hook? Perfect. Can't really film you because you're in your undies. Sorry, what do you think of it, Rugs? You're open? What is it? A new toy? It would be ironic if I put in a kid without clothes with this Mr. Beast thing. Like Mr. Beast videos are known for like lots of edits and sound effects and like so much going on that you can't resist the video. And it has here 80 plus lights, sounds and reactions. Your kid will love this because there's way too much going on that they can't get bored with it. Don't open it yet, Rugies. He's gone to get a knife. I feel bad showing him and then taking it away. But I want to... Something that comes with intuition. A video I, honestly, I filmed a long time ago and then posted on YouTube yesterday. Title, this is it. Your mom's house in the UK versus the US. It's a terrible title. And the video is about me going to the, the dump in the UK versus the US and how it's a different experience. And it's something I used to do with my dad, not as like a fun thing, but like when I was helping him at weekends and I wanted to see what the difference was. Now that title, everyone from a video doing well perspective would be like, that's a terrible title, you shouldn't do that. But to me, like that's just my sense of humor. That's my intuition telling me just to go with that because it feels right. Disregarding view counts and all that kind of stuff. Now, if I were to go to a, for a better, more logical title, you'd probably have a better result, but when you think about being online, you're not thinking about, like, you shouldn't be thinking about the initial impact of something performing well. You should be thinking about the longevity of building, you know, what people call your brand. So like in this case, my brand would be stupid titles just because they feel right. Doing this for the fun of it. I don't want to do this for the views anymore. And in this creative world, following your intuition doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean that it's going to do well, but it feels Right. The video file has come in of me wearing this Shrek outfit. So this video will be coming soon on TikTok. So it's in what you call like a log file. So it's, it's meant to be better for color grading, but it looks terrible now. What are we doing here, Oliver? <laughs> that was me screaming. Actually, before I show you this next bit, this is something where I hate being the center of attention, but buying, putting on this outfit and doing this walk 
because the other 20, 30 people that were doing this experience with me are watching me in this case, because I went last. And everything in my body was saying, you don't do this, don't be the center of attention. Why are you wearing a Shrek outfit? But I have to put all of that aside to do two things. One, prioritize what I'm trying to achieve in the video, which is what I'm there for. I'm not there just to have fun, I'm there to make this video. And put aside my insecurities of being the center of attention. I'd like to think you could hear everyone laughing. Everyone did laugh, okay? <laughs> but I'm gonna show you how many emails I have sent so far. So I think to do that, I'll show you how this system works, this platform. So this is Pickle. You have all your different selection options up here, but for me, I go pretty bare because I go looking for brands based on the name of who I want to work with. Remembering that any sponsorship I do on one of my videos, the sponsor has to be an integral part to the video. If it's not, it doesn't work. What's, a, what's one I... I have lots of videos I want to do that are DIY, so I'm searching for the Home Depot. Twist it around again, Oliver, make it more, get, give you sickness. And they are linked, they're a sponsor of the MLS, so I should have a perfect in to make myself seem more valuable to them. So if I search the name, I increase the follow account to get a broader range of who the Home Depot are sponsored. I'll click on any one of them, double check, yes, they've been sponsored by the Home Depot. I'll select the contact. And here I have a full list of everyone who seems to be associated with any kind of partnership. From there, I can select the name, draft an email, and I have like a, a basic pitch. But I haven't figured out how to use this system yet. So if I go to my email, we can see, I'm having a look for all the emails I sent yesterday. Now, as I mentioned, that is just the beginning of a potential partnership. I'm not expecting to get a response from that initial email, but I'll follow up at first every week, adding some sort of value to the follower people, not just like, I just wanted to see if you'd see my message. Adding where I can add value, like this one, for example, with Epson. I know that they're doing a campaign and I wanna try and get in on that. So I made a post for them, that got like half a million views on Instagram. And I'm one, two, three, four emails deep with this one person in particular. So I said, okay, I get it. Half a million people seems impossible to visualize, but I'm going to try. All of Atlanta, Georgia, all of Luxembourg, all of Malta, Coachella, but five times bigger. 50 football fields of people standing shoulder to shoulder. That's how many people viewed this video with your printer from your Evergreen campaign. It's a bit of shock value in there, but I wanted to show that I'm not just, I don't just want to pull something from you but I wanna share something interesting. What was the email before that? Uh, morning, have you seen HP printers going viral for their, on TikTok for their monthly subscriptions? There was a video I saw that had like a million views. People were not happy. So then I've given some reasons why I think now is a good time for Epsom to push on a campaign, to try and capitalize off of that, not make their competitor look bad, but if people are seeing HP are bad and have subscriptions and they then see the Epson printers, at least they, they link that name with a printer, the next time they think about going for a printer, they should be going for an Epson, or at least consider Epson, who have a much smaller market share, which I pointed out in a previous email. So we'll see what comes of that. And tomorrow, let's see what half a ton of my merch looks like. <laughs> okay, bye.